All right, y'all, today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm on day 14 of a two week road trip. I just left Caleb from You Can Make This Two shop in Memphis. Today is gonna be the story of how I failed twice in my half of a collaboration we did together to build a coffee table. But stick around, I feel like there's something you can get from it. And Caleb is gonna have a video of the complete finished product, which I'm sure is gonna turn out great. Let's go. last here um october, october I want to say. Yeah. yeah thank yeah. you for coming back we're right I'm about a year really excited about this coffee table we're going to put together <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah okay so the story here is i made the top of a coffee table out of some walnut slabs we left the ends all all rustic we came up with this a few months ago rich said hey if you make a top i'll make a base i'm coming through we'll put it together i said that sounds great so the top is here i left the base in oklahoma city when i left yeah. for this trip so when I was at Maker Table yesterday, I had the pieces cut out again, and we decided that we would try and put it together again here. But Which I'm not a metal shop. Yeah. I'm a wood shop. So we uh, made a valiant effort to make yeah, this work. We did. So when I was over at Maker Table and we cut out these replacement profiles, I decided not to cut these holes in because I was still kind of iffy on whether or not that was actually the right thing to do. I got here and Caleb was like, yeah, I thought they sounded great. They, they look good, we should have them. So we took a jigsaw, some drill bits, and cut them out. They're not perfect, but from a couple feet away, they're good enough. You know, it kind of shows, you don't actually have to have a plasma table, although, you know, it pays for itself in time savings very quickly. And even though they didn't come out perfect, we talked about that and decided that what we do is move on to the strapping and then use the diamond wheel and some other things to kind of scuff it up, make it look rustic. So that way the lack of perfection just kind of blended and looked intentional. Right. And yeah. it's going with the walnut top that where the ends still have like some rock pockets and are really rough. So it would blend together with the piece really well. So we moved on to the strapping and unfortunately we just weren't able to make this first tight bend because... We're not equipped well, we for made it, it. We made it and too tight. Is really the yeah. Problem. We we made it. We made it too tight. We couldn't yeah. get the uh, the radius right. So this is when we decided this just wasn't going to work yeah. in this shop. I'm just going to ship out the original, and Caleb's going to prove his welding skills by welding two pieces together. Oh, I hate everything about this. So I'm sure right about now you're starting to realize I'm pretty much throwing a grown up temper tantrum. I don't like when projects don't work, and Today didn't work, but what are you going to do? So let's go back in time a little bit to my shop. I actually don't have the footage of me plasma cutting these pieces out. Don't know why, but we get them cut just like I did at Maker Table. This is out of 12 gauge steel. Probably could have done to go to 10 gauge, but for what it is, these were pretty strong. We're going to clean up all the edges, just wire brush them down. And then I'm going to run over to my scrap pile and just check and see if I have a piece of pipe that matches this inside radius pretty well. And I did, which was fortunate. So we'll take a small piece of that, about four inches long, cut off on the cold cut saw, and I'm just going to tack that down to the table. And this is really where the tooling diverged quite a bit between what I do at my shop and what Caleb does. I've got an 800 pound table that I can weld things to and use as a bending and prying piece. Caleb doesn't and I've got a different layout, a little bit more space uh, just by the nature of the fact that Caleb's working out of a home shop. So the approach to making this faux I-beam look is to take your plasma cut piece, that's going to be the web of the I-beam if you will and then pick what size strapping you want to use to wrap it or make the flanges. In this case we're using an eighth inch by two inch flat bar. It seems to look the most proportional and other than taking that piece of pipe and tacking it down to the table this is really just a, a game of clamps and sneaking up on where you are. Caleb and I crimped the bend at his shop because we didn't have something to reference off of like this and you know the reason that didn't happen when I did it myself was I have this pipe to reference off of and big enough clamps to sneak up on the fit. 
Whenever possible, if using welds that are going to be visible and almost a statement piece, I actually like to mark out where they're going to be. Here, that long runs about 32 inches, so I'm marking two inches in from the end, and then I'm going to straddle that middle mark by two inches. So I'll make a mark at 15 and 17, and that will tell me where to put my welds. The way I do that is just make a tack at each of those marks while you can see them under the helmet, and then start welding. Uh, with a standard Sharpie, you're going to have a hard time seeing that while you've got an arc lit. So if you have a tack at either end, you, you've kind of given yourself boundaries to weld within, and you get nice even spacing that looks very intentional. So one thing that you're not going to see me do in this video is go into a lot of detail on exactly how to get this strapping and the CNC plasma cut piece to line up and look right and come out nice and clean. And the reason for that is I expected this project to be just part of a larger video, so didn't film all the little details. Fortunately, I have been pitching this idea to a number of people for quite a while because I've really wanted to do a project like this. Caleb jumped at it, and then a customer that I had pitched it to long before came back and said they wanted to go forward with their project. So next week's video is going to be a more in-depth approach to how to do this on a larger scale for a bigger table. That just is the way the world happens to work out sometimes. As we work the strapping, that's the eighth of an inch by two inch flat bar around the piece, the, the two big things to watch out for are one, that you don't put a kink in that strapping. If you grab way out away from where you're trying to bend it and pull real hard, it's gonna be easier to make the bend, but you're gonna find the weak spot in the steel and put a kink in it. If you try and grab too close, you're just gonna be pushing way too hard, but of course you won't put a kink in that steel. So you gotta find a nice balance and the use of C-clamps or other clamps to aid in that is definitely the way to go. As this was my first time tackling a project like this, one thing I didn't think about, but that I really should have, was that as I'm doing all these welds on one side of the plasma cut profile, I'm introducing a warp into that strapping. The weld cools and tightens and tries to pull the strapping out of 90. What I should have been doing is flipping the piece over and either alternating my welds or duplicating each weld on the other side immediately, but the warp was pretty minor in this, and in the end, the entire thing sits flat within somewhere between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch, which in a table base is not something that's going to hurt you. That's really close. Now it's really easy to see how when these were made, they got some bends in them. So I'm going to do some tacks. This is pretty pliable, so use some tacks to pull it and hold it straight. Alrighty y'all, as we run out the second half of this build, the duplicate of what you just saw in one montage so you can see everything that goes into it, I just want to say, when I started making videos, part of the reason was because I wanted to be part of this community and work with some of the guys that I've learned from, maybe give something back. I feel like that's where the channel's evolved to and I'm really happy about it. Caleb's one of those people who's doing the exact same thing. I met Caleb at the very first maker event I attended, and I'm really happy to say he's become a good friend. He's a great guy, awesome family, and he's doing what I'm trying to do, but in the woodworking space. He's got an entire series on tool substitution where he'll show you how to put a square edge on a board if you don't have a jointer, how to do XYZ if you don't have a bandsaw or whatever. I'm obviously not the woodworker here. Let him know I sent you. That's always fun to do. Let's blow his comments section up and help the algorithm. So I shipped the profiles out to Caleb. He welded them together, putting his own little spin on how they go, and I think it turned out awesome. The wood is gorgeous. Caleb covers the entire process of how he did that in his video. You guys don't want to miss that. You guys should go check out Caleb's video on how the top was put together because it came out gorgeous. It's going to be right there. Subscribe to his channel while you're at it. I'm over here, and uh, we'll have something that YouTube thinks you might like right here. 
Until next time, guys, make time to make something. There you go. Thanks for stopping by.